is that? This is going to be exciting. Oh. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Where is the big one? That is the question. Whoa! The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the outdoors superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, proudly Canadian since 1951. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. As Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So too is a prearranged fly-in fishing trip. Nothing is more challenging than trying to anticipate nature's mood swings, especially the past few years. It's early June, so our drive to White River, Ontario is full of the early season promise of warmer summer days ahead. One incredible vista after another. What a great way to start this trip. White River Air is one of the most respected carriers in this region. This family-owned airline is a staple in these parts, not only for the fishing industry, but also involved in the forestry, mining, and exploration communities. After a short and scenic flight, we arrive at our final destination, Agach's Cabby Cabins on Lake Cabin Akagami, where our host, Stuart Agach, met us at the dock and quickly informed me of the bad news. Unheard of high water levels and a very erratic barometer. Great! Just what we needed, flooding conditions and soaring temperatures. Not exactly what I expected. After a very short time in the water, I knew this was definitely going to be a Forrest Gump kind of shoot. Because where we expected to see pike, we saw a whole lot of nothing. The bays and shallows were totally void of fish. I just swallowed a black fly. Oh. They must be in full post-spawn mode. Their recent instinct to reproduce had worn them out, and now they must be in deep water, recovering. Time to move. Cabby Lake is a big lake, over 25 miles long, with 147 islands, and under normal conditions, it covers over 30,000 acres of surface area. But with these high water conditions, who knows how big it really is right now? So, finding these post-spawn fish is going to be tough, and catching them even tougher. To make matters worse, it's a fluctuating barometer, meaning that they're apt to be hunkered down somewhere, not exerting themselves. So their strike zone could be the size of a hockey puck, and that means you've got to put that bait right on their noses before they'll eat it. Alrighty. There's one. Oh, he's moving line across. That's a little, oh, he's not huge. Got that on that, whoa. A little tiny spinner. Sometimes these things absolutely amaze me how a bigger fish can attack a little wee tiny spinner like that. Actually, I might be able to release that right next to the boat. Oh, thank you. Actually, help me on that. After the first day, things were looking pretty grim, and my host Stuart knew it. So while I was out fishing and not catching, he was out running around the lake looking for fish. At dinner that night, he told me he saw something interesting near the top end of the lake. Dozens of terns and seagulls diving and apparently feeding on the surface. I was immediately intrigued. My experience told me that bait fish on the surface, where birds could feed on them, meant something was driving them there. And since nothing happened in the part of the lake I fished in today, I decided to make a long trip to the north and check it out. This is that magic moment that most anglers wait for. The mouth of this river right now is just chock full of bait and you can see them all swimming along the surface. With Stuart's directions and map in hand, I turned into the last bay at the top of the lake called Boot Bay. And sure enough, after a few minutes, I could see lots of birds diving in what appeared to be a swamp. Strange. I slowed down and approached quietly. 
What I saw looked like a little river that had been flooded. There was flooded brush on both sides with a narrow clear channel running through the middle, maybe 30 to 40 feet across. But what really blew my mind was the sight of thousands of bait fish jumping and scurrying across the surface like a flock of sheep being herded into a corral by predators. The apex predator in these parts, pike, masses of pike. It was mayhem. This is that magic moment that most anglers wait for. I just came up to this little creek that's dumping into this bay, and all I can see back here is, is an activity of bait fish. Turns and seagulls are diving down. There's, there's big pike pushing them up. It is absolutely frenzy time. The mouth of this river right now is just chock full of bait, and you can see them all swimming along the surface. And that means that they're, there they are there, means that they're being herded up. I'm gonna throw a topwater bait, well, not just a topwater bait. I'm gonna throw a mighty ball up there. This is gonna be exciting. Oh, he ate that most. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Oh, that's just too much fun. As I started up the little river, casting and catching as I went, I realized that this was not a river at all. The bottom was the tops of brush a foot or so below the surface. And when I looked up, I could see open water, maybe a hundred meters away. Obviously, the high water had flooded a depression in what appeared to be a little peninsula, creating a little island out of it. And this cut? Well, it was black with bait fish, with pike lunging and jumping among them, gorging themselves. It begged the question, if it's not a river or stream, what in the heck are these bait fish doing here? That's nuts. In the middle of the chaos in the cut, it was really interesting to see the pike jammed up against the brush, just sitting there, digesting. Presumably. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. Whoa. Oh, look at these fish. Oh. But I'll guarantee you there's some big pike around here. I just saw a huge fin in there. Did you know that Ontario has the best northern pike fishing on the continent? With exceptional fisheries located across the province, these prehistoric monsters are lurking in countless lakes and rivers. And once they start striking, you're in for a ferocious battle. Pike, after all, have changed very little in the past 50 million years. With their sharp teeth and long serpentine bodies, these bad girls look and fight like evolutionary throwbacks. And trust me, it's the females you'll be going for. They're the much larger of the species. With a diet that can include fish, frogs, small rodents, muskrat, and even young waterfowl, pike are true predators. Get one on your line, and you'll know why they're at the top of the food chain. Going after pike definitely puts the sport in sport fishing. And unlike most parts of the country, where catching monster pike requires an extended trip to the northern regions, Ontario's monsters can be found in all areas of the province, north to south. For a true fishing treat, look to Ontario's northern pike. You don't have to drive far to find adventure. In fact, it's as close as GoFishInOntario.com. This is nuts. Absolutely annihilated Mo. Small pike, but holy mackerel. Well, we used Mighty Mo again on these sluggish pike and caught one on every cast. They just couldn't resist that mouse bait. Moving back and forth through the channel, I located deeper troughs at either end and threw some plastic jigs in. And sure enough, I caught walleye. Now they weren't anywhere else, so that means that they weren't competing with the pike that were shallower but I'm sure they're getting plenty of each, judging by the amount of bait fish in this cut. Pete's scheduled to shoot a walleye show on this lake tomorrow. 
Well, you won't have to waste time searching. I've got the mother load for him. I just can't wait to get back to camp and tell him about this crazy situation. I just hope it lasts until tomorrow. Because in all my years on the water, I've never seen anything like this. I'm still trying to figure it out. Frenzy over here with Pike, walleye down the deep channel. <laughs> Paradise, baby. Where's the big one? That is the question. <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah, big gator. <laughs> Swim away from the boat. <laughs> he gave up pretty quick though, you know, for, for a fish of that size, you can see the size of the head on him. You would think he'd run more, but this is a weird year this year. The water's been, of course, a long winter. The water's been really cold and all of a sudden it warmed up. And it's hard to tell whether these fish are spawn, immediate post spawn or completely spawned out or... Alrighty, there you go. There you go. As you can see, the fish is kind of cooperating. Gotcha. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at the size of that baby. <laughs> KB Lake, now he's pretty small body-wise, but you can see the head is massive on this thing. <laughs> That's, we got a perfect drift for this fish. Just slowly moving through the water, getting that uh, lactic acid out. See ya, buddy. Today's hotspot is a shallow flooded weedy flat adjacent to a channel. The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. Now this spot is normally dry in the summer, but during my mid-spring trip, it produced a feeding frenzy that I've never experienced before. Hundreds of thousands of bait fish scoured the area and the pike weren't too far behind. Since some of the extremely active fish were slashing bait on the surface, I decided to throw out Mighty Mo, a mouse imitating topwater bait with unbelievable action. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishincanada.com. Whoa, that's that's a big gator. That's gotta be. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, under the boat. This is insanity. <laughs> hey buddy, how you making out? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought you'd say. Now this fish, I'm thinking, is hanging out here either feeding on this, the multitude of small pike that are feeding on the bait that's in those bushes, or he's feeding on the walleye that are down here. Probably the walleye. Oh, that's a beauty. <laughs> How sweet is that? And this bad boy is out here feeding on those things that are jumping around behind me, and the walleye that are in the channel as well. <laughs> if we can revive him. Okay, buddy. Look at the scars on his back. He's got two or three old scars. He or she. Oh. Whoa. Whoa is all I gotta say. I don't know whether you really focused in on what I'm doing. Look at the stretch of water that I fished for all that. This whole channel is no more than maybe 300 feet long. That's it eight feet deep in the middle, and mayhem going on over here, incredible walleye schools in the deep hole, and a marauding big northern chasing them all down, and me, and you. That's it. <laughs> oh, you gotta love this game. Oh. 
what in the world could be causing this? We've got water that heated up 25 to 30 degrees over three days, a full moon that was bright even during the day, extremely high water conditions that caused this cut, a shallow brush bottom. So were these baitfish migrating, spawning, or both? The predominant baitfish in Cabby Lake is the black chub, and they do migrate, but usually up creeks and rivers to spawn. And they are broadcasters, in other words, they scatter their eggs all over the place, but usually over rocks. Maybe they're confused somehow by this bizarre occurrence. The pike and walleye, well, they're true to form. They just came along for the feast. Mr. Gump, you were right. You never know what you're going to get. I'm just glad I was here to witness it. To get to today's fantastic fishing location, I headed north on Highway 400 to Highway 69 at Sudbury, then headed west on Highway 17 to the town of White River. I then boarded a float plane at White River Air, which I took to Agatha's Cabby Cabins on Cabby Lake. This is what every angler dreams about. That special moment, that little, that little frame in your fishing life that everything comes together. We've got a marauding school of pike behind me that are chasing these tiny bait fish. There's literally millions of them. And out here in the deeper channel are these guys filling their guts. And that's the part of the KLP formula I want to talk about today. The L part of the KLP formula, location is really important that you kind of formulate before you go out in the water. The areas that uh, there are going to be high percentage areas for the fish that you're after that day. But then every once in a while, even after you've got it all figured out, you got to put your hands, your, yourself in the hands of God, because that's what happened here. Heard a bunch of splashing back in this channel, put the boat nose in, had a peek. There was some turns and some other birds dropping down in the water, feeding on this school of bait fish. Everything is here. This just happened. You got to keep your eyes open, your ears open, and let some of nature's uh, little tales tell you where to fish like I did today. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks. Nothing works harder than a ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water and Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine.